Amen. Tonight, the title of my message is, Do Not Compromise the Light in You. Tell somebody sitting beside you, do not compromise the light in you. Do not compromise the light in you. Amen. Amen. Shall we just get to our anchor scripture, which is Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. So we're going to read the New King James Version, and afterwards I will read the, the Passion Translation. So it says, you are, the light, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by man. 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Say, I am the light of the world. And I cannot be hidden. The Holy Spirit is the light in me. Therefore, I cannot be hidden. Amen. Let's continue. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Say, I will let my light so shine. I will let my light shine so bright in my family, in my workplace, in my neighborhood, in my community, in the nations of the world. I will impact those that are around me. I will impact the nations of the world. Amen. Amen. I just want to read the, the, um, in, in, um, the, the Passion Translation. So it says, your lights are like salt among the people. But if you, like salt, become blunt, how can your saltiness be restored? Flavorless salt is good for nothing and will be thrown out and trampled on by others. Your lights light up the world. For now, for how can you hide a city that stands on a hilltop? And who will light a lamp and then hide it in an obscure place? Um, place? Instead, it's placed under everyone in the house. It's placed where everyone in the house can benefit from its light. So don't hide your light. Say to your neighbor, don't hide your light. Don't hide your light. Let it shine brightly before others so that so that you'll be commendable, um, so that your commendable works will shine as light upon them, and they, and then they will give their praise to your Father in heaven. Amen. So tonight, like I said, my word, the title, um, the title of my word is "Do not compromise the light in you." How many times have we compromised the light that is in us? So we all know when you read First Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen. Prof, could we put it on there? It says our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit is what? It's who dwells in us. Amen? It says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Continue. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are which which temple you are? Amen. So the Holy Spirit dwells in this being. It dwells in our bodies. Amen. You know, um, I don't know if you guys have heard the song. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. <laughs> so, where did you guys hear the song? The first time I heard this song was on Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yes, I saw Will Smith, remember him and um, what's his name? Carlton doing the dance, right? They had this. So, I'm like, that was the first time ever, actually. Yeah, I don't know if it's a Sunday school song, but it is, right? But yeah, that was the first time I heard the song. And funny enough, as I was preparing for this message, and that song came to mind, I'm like, this little light of mine, mm -mm. the light in us is not small. 
The light in us is not little. The light in us is mighty. The light is not, in us is great. The light in us is huge. Amen? So we don't say this little light of ours because what? The Holy Spirit dwells in us. The spirit that dwells in us is what? Mightier than the mightiest. Bigger than the biggest. Stronger than the strongest. More powerful than anything out there. Amen? So we need to acknowledge that light that is in us. The light is who? The Holy Spirit. Right? So we sing this song calling the light little, but we've forgotten that the light in us is what? It's huge. It's great. It's great. So how bright we will shine will depend on how much we avail ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Are we dwelling? Are we allowing the light to um, lead us? Do we have fellowship with him, the Holy Spirit? Do we heed to his instructions and directions when he leads us? Do we acknowledge him in all our ways? Tonight, I want to use Esther, the book of Esther, um, as a case study. I just want to talk a little about compromising. Amen? When you read Esther chapter 2, verse 15, can we put it there, please? So it says, now, when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter to go in to the king, she requested nothing but what Haggai, the, in, um, the king's Enoch, the custodian of the women, advised. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his royal palace in the 10th month, which is the month of Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. The king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Amen. So looking at this story, as I was reading, I'm like, what was so special about Esther? What was it about her that the king had all these numerous women, like different women, going to see him? They, they were groomed. We all know of the story of Esther, so I don't need to really explain. However, what was it about Esther? She carried lights. Amen? The difference knew who she was in Christ. Amen? She didn't go to compromise. It says here what? When every, all the other women, when they were going to the king, they, they decided to take certain things with them. They took a whole lot of different things. But Esther, she only listened to the inner, what he had. That was brought up in a home where Christ was vi vivid. Amen? So she carried light. And this, that light that she carried is what, what took her to the palace. Amen? That light that she carried is what attracted the king. As I was reading, who knows, they must have slept with them or maybe he must have done something with them, right? But right after, what happens? He just let them go, right? He does not let them stay. But Esther, hers was different. I'm sure we attempt to even sleep with her just because of what she carried, amen? So tonight, my question to you is, what do you carry? We keep saying that, what? We are the light of the world. What do you carry? Is the light in you? Are you compromising that light? What are you doing with that light that's in you? Amen? Are we compromising? Are we compromising the light that is in us? Are we fellowshipping with the light that is in us? Or are we dimming the light? Amen? I want us to also go to Esther chapter 6 verse 12. I want to talk about Mordecai. Esther chapter 6, verse 12. So it says, Afterward, Mordecai went back to the king's gate, but Haman hurried to his house mourning and with his head covered. So we all know what had happened, right? Mo <laughs> Haman had a plan. He had plotted to, uh, to annihilate uh, Mordecai. But what happened? His plotting or his evil did backfired on him. And then the king ended up what? Honoring Mordecai. Let's continue. When Haman told his wife, Serich, and all his friends, everything that had happened to him, his wise men and his um, wife, Serich, said to him, if Mordecai before whom you have begun to fall is of Jewish descent, 
that you will not prevail against him, but you will surely fall before him. Amen? That, was, that is powerful. Go back, please. That is power. He said, if Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, is of Jewish descent. So we all know that the Jewish people are what? They belong to Christ, right? Jesus came for them. So if he's of Jewish descent and, Mordecai, um, and Haman has plans against him, then he will surely fall. So that also tells us that what? Mordecai also carried what? Lights. Amen? He also had the light shining through him. Because why? He, did, he chose not to compromise. He was sitting at the king's gate. And, you know, every time that Haman was passing by, they will all bow down. But he says, no way. I will not bow. How many times will we bow? We go to our workplaces and people are swearing. People are, you know, just doing whatever and we just join them. That's compromising. Do we allow our light to shine so that others will know that indeed we carry Christ? Mordecai chose not to. He said, I will not bow. He says, I will not bow. He knew who he was. A lot of times.